Tom Brady proves that stardom isn't merely temporary and difficult to let go of. This week, I was impressed by two brief, unrelated stories about working in the entertainment industry. The first was a profile of John Josso in the New York Times. You've probably never heard of the professional baseball player Josso. He did one noteworthy thing in terms of sports, he left games when he didn't have to. Josso left his job at age 33 to start sailing, literally. He currently cruises, but to no specific place. In his career, he earned roughly $17 million USD. He believes that is sufficient. Josso told the Times writer that he had heard the phrase you might be walking away from millions of dollars even after he had retired. But I had already made millions. Why do we need more, more, more all the time? The second tale concerned Bill Watterson. The syndicated comic strip Calvin and Hobbes, which is thought to be the most significant literary contribution made by American newspapers, was created by Watterson. Over Calvin and Hobbes' entire run, Watterson devoted himself to keeping it free of goal creep. He didn't want to produce Calvin and Hobbes, the movie in bedspreads. All he had in mind was to sketch a cartoon. In the mid-1990s, as his child was ready to enter into orbit around the world, Watterson hit the self-destruct button. Watterson penned a lengthy non-apology about his choice in his local newspaper after being pushed to return for years, it's always preferable to leave the party early. As he has a new book coming out after a 28-year absence, Watterson is once again making headlines. It's unrelated to Calvin and Hobbes. Although each of these men was once renowned in their own right, their current fame is a result of their lack of interest in recognition. That is the new famous, the kind of fame that is more admirable. Basic fame is a resource that is rapidly eroding. A battle it was to get renowned 30 years ago. To attract individuals to assist you spread your message, you would need to persuade them to use a printing press, radio transmitter, or television license. Then, as you were delivering it, you would have to pray that people were reading the appropriate magazine or watching the proper show. Then you would have to hope that they were moved by you to the point that they would leave their houses and tell others about you. Today, anyone can become famous, say something horrifying to someone who is already somewhat popular on the internet while using your real identity. After an hour, you'll become well-known. Also, you'll enjoy an hour of fame before losing your job forever. Though if the goal is a bunch of strangers knowing your name, it's not hard to get there. Anything that easy to obtain has no value. The new fame is those who have achieved renown for their skills or body of work but don't cherish it. It's challenging to obtain since it necessitates an enormous display of restraint. Have you seen the current photograph of Tom Brady curled up on an unmade bed wearing only his underwear? You did, of course. Brady is an amplifier of his own fame. Within a few minutes of the retired quarterback saying or doing something, everyone is talking about it. You will see it whether you want to or not. A few days prior to the Super Bowl, Brady posted the image on social media. It spread all around. Brady later claimed to be unaware of the term thirst trap, while suddenly appearing to be more online than Chak PT. Brady admitted that she had to look it up because she didn't even know what it meant. Still, she just thought the picture of some underwear was cute. Nothing more, please. Let's all play pretend together, okay? Brady succeeded in generating conversation, if that was the goal. Brady needs to hire more and better publicists if the goal is to change people's perceptions of him. Maybe foreigners who are unfamiliar with football. Someone who will be honest with him. Brady's status has changed in the past month from that of an unwillingly famous man known for his work to one of a graspingly famous man without a regular employment. This man looks like he's surrounded by hangers-on and well-wishers, who wakes up on a random weekday morning and thinks, what I really need today is for the internet to tell me I'm still beautiful. The impression left is one of sadness and decline. It's touching in its way. But better to have played another mediocre season than whatever this is. Everybody in sports is like Brady now, they can't leave and be quiet for a bit. Even the richest and most famous of them. Actually, the richer and more famous, the worse the disease. They won't find a new hobby or try a different creative project. Even if the sport is making them miserable and they keep telling people how miserable it makes them, they can't give up being the focus of attention. This isn't strange. If you're used to people listening when you speak, it must be jarring to transition to a space where no one cares who you are or what you think. Welcome to the desert of the real. Most of us already live here. We used to think of the recluse as an odd character, like J.D., Salinger or Thomas Pynchon, someone who couldn't cope. Today, the recluse is an aspirational figure. He or she is someone who doesn't feel the need to advertise. They've made their compromises to amass some attention to their work and, having made enough to live in peace and harmony, retreat from the public scene, which is not the same as leaving life. We used to admire stars such as Muhammad Ali or Sophia Loren because they could be so famous, and yet so fully themselves. Fame didn't alter them perceptibly or, if it did, somehow for the better. But back then, they had the luxury of disappearing whenever they felt like it. Few stars can bring themselves to do that now. They fight it when it reaches its inevitable conclusion. It always comes to a terrible conclusion. Josso is one of the incredibly, incredibly few people who dodged fame death. Watterson unintentionally set the new guidelines in his article on why he gave up the endeavor that made him famous. The folks now grieving for Calvin and Hobbes would be wishing me dead, he said. 
if I had rolled along with the strip's fame and repeated myself for another 5, 10 or 20 years, being famous is no longer noteworthy, but being well-known while letting go, that will continue to spark conversation.